In this video, I'm going to break down how I made a render of a real place in Blender using just one photograph. You can apply these techniques to recreate pretty much any photo in 3D, and you should have no problem following along as long as you understand the basics of the Blender interface. So to begin this process, I obviously need a reference image. I headed over to pixabay.com, which is my go-to destination for copyright-free images. Eventually, I stumbled across the profile of a photographer called Michael Gader. He has loads of fantastic pictures on his profile, and I knew this particular image of a German metro station would be quite an interesting challenge for me to recreate. Once I had the image, I had to work out the perspective of the scene. To do that, I used a free tool called FSpy. FSpy is the standalone version of an old Blender add-on called Blam. You just match up your image with a few perspective guides and FSpy will calculate the position of the camera for you automatically. FSpy also has an add-on which allows you to import the save files straight into Blender. I began the modelling process by blocking out some very basic geometry. My only concern at this point is to get the alignment as accurate as possible. Trust me, you don't want to get halfway through the modelling process only to find out that your perspective is completely wrong and nothing's aligned properly. It sucks when that happens and I'm speaking from experience. So to figure out where objects should be located in 3D space, I placed cuts along the floor and the walls, then I slid them into place and aligned things based on those cuts. I have a bad habit of getting too caught up in the modelling process when I should still be blocking out the main scene. I really wanted to start work on those metal poles in the foreground, but it's pointless to start adding details when the foundations aren't set yet. The stairs of the escalator were made from a simple cube with a few extruded loop cuts to create grooves and teeth. I used an array modifier to repeat these stairs up the staircase. I had a total nightmare getting them to align properly. Escalator stairs change size near the top and the bottom of the staircase, so it's basically impossible to get them to properly align with an array modifier. Eventually, I made a plane and aligned it with the side of the handrail, so I knew that the stairs would at least be roughly in the right place and the right angle. This part right here is very satisfying. Actually, let's watch that again. I switched over to Eevee and used a HDRI to provide some basic lighting. I really like the Easy HDRI add-on for this, which is free and I'll link to that in the description. After that, I started working on the wall tiles. I could have just faked the tiles with a texture, but real tiles are easy to create and modelling them properly I think is worth the payoff. I used a few array modifiers to repeat them along the wall. For the tile texture itself, I used my Ultimate Marble material, which I created this month for my Patreon account. The marble material didn't need much tweaking to look pretty close to the reference image. I experimented with a gradient node to add some grout between the tiles, but I had to replace this method with a much more simple one later once I applied the array modifier. I made a basic chrome texture which was meant to act just as a placeholder, although it ended up staying in the final render. It's basically just a default principal node with a few noise textures in there to add some roughness and bump variation. I then went back and finished the tiles. I used the bisect tool just to add the cuts where I need them. The piece of trim under the tiles was very simple. It's just an extended cube with some rough metallic material applied. The posts for the windows were created in the same way using another array modifier to align them across the whole scene. The top edge of the walls was extruded and separated, then I gave it a glass texture, although I did end up changing this texture later on, which I'll explain then. I added a few loop cuts to the sign and extruded the illuminated parts slightly into the frame. Then I unwrapped those parts and made two basic textures in Photoshop. One texture was the sign graphics with a bit of grunge applied. The other texture was an emission map, which is just this black and white one at the bottom. As you can see, it's very, very basic, and all it does is it tells Blender which parts of the sign should be lit up or not. A few metal boxes were created to add the supports for the sign. This was the first point where I felt like the render was finally coming together. 
sometimes very early in the modeling process you can feel that everything's going to look fine this was not one of those times i spent half of this project just contemplating whether i should put the whole thing in the bin and start again i quickly duplicated the sign and chucked it at the back on the roof section so it would fill out the background a little bit at this point i was really worried about the scene and i just wanted to get it to come together a bit more The roof itself was just a plane with 50 loop cuts going in each direction. I then used the wireframe option in the face menu which turned it into a grid mesh. I slapped an array modifier on it, gave it a metal texture and moved it into place. So now you can see I'm just modelling out some background details. This is all very simple geometry since it's going to be out the focus and it's very far in the background anyway. I added a studded metal texture from textures.com onto the floor. This turned out to be a total waste of time since the details were completely lost in the final render anyway. I saved the partitions between the stairs until last because frankly I thought it was going to be a huge pain to get it right, but it actually came together very easily. It was just a cube which I extruded up and used a bevel to create the curves. I jiggled everything around and moved it into place until it was in roughly the right location. For the handrails, I just made two edge cuts that went through the whole thing and I beveled them slightly then extruded them out. I copied a few of the stairs, took the array modifier off and just stuck them at the bottom so you would have a base to the uh, escalator. The white material on the floor was another one from textures.com. I did twig it slightly, but it was actually very close to what I needed. Finally, to finish off the modelling, I went back to those metal posts in the foreground. I just used a few basic techniques, such as booleans, to finish that off, which was very quick and dirty, but it came out looking fine. The light bulbs were just point lights, and the lenses in front of the light bulbs were principal shaders, I give it a full transmission value and quite a lot of transmission roughness. Then I used a wave texture and plugged that into a bump node which went into the normal. That created those vertical deflector lines. I quickly made some signs in Photoshop to go to the, on the bottom of the escalator, although they weren't really visible in the final render so this was kind of a waste of time. I was pretty happy with the train station HDRI but I did want to play around with a few others just to see what sorts of different looks I could get. Eevee's really good for preview and stuff like this. I tweaked the colour of the HDRI slightly, then I started working on the rest of the lighting. Mostly just a few point lights dotted around the scene in various places. Once the lighting was done, I started setting up the camera. I enabled depth of field and made one of the metal poles the focal point. Then I played with the depth of field value until the background was just slightly out of focus. At this point I realised this was a very dark render with lots of metallic reflective surfaces and render times were going to be slow. To speed things up a little I replaced that glass that I made earlier on with a reflective black plane. It looked good enough to be passable for a background object and it was much faster than trying to render a transparent object. I set the samples to about a thousand. I would have liked to have went with more but I was pretty short on time. Everything else was set to default apart from the film look which I increased to be medium high contrast. The raw render came out looking something like this. Absolutely horrible. The shiny metal surfaces had nothing to reflect off so they came out looking too dark. The low lighting conditions cost me detail and made everything look muddy, especially after denoising. Even though I was very short on time I decided to go for another render. I turned up some of the light sources and added a few more point lights above the escalator. Then I removed the black plane that was above the whole scene and re-rendered. The second result came out looking much, much better. I used the denoising node, the lens distortion node and the glare node just to add in some small details. I then took the render into Photoshop for some fine tuning which gave me a result that looks something like this. I didn't do anything major, just a little bit of colour correction change, 
and some noise was added just to simulate how a real camera would look in similar lighting conditions. The project files for this scene will be uploaded to my Patreon. I'll leave a link to that and everything else I've mentioned in the description below. While you're down there, you may as well hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. This is the second video I've done in this style where I break down my whole process from start to finish. I'd love to know what you think about this kind of tutorial, so leave a comment and let me know what you think. If you'd like to see more videos like this, let me know. Thanks for watching, until the next time, goodbye.